Vlog 158. If you missed the announcement last time, I'm heading to Texas at the end of the month. It's gonna be at 52 Social in Austin, coming up on April 26th, 27th, and 28th. And Ryan DePaulo is gonna be out there as well. And if you wanna play some poker when you're on the go, consider joining my club on Poker Bros. It's called High Society. Just click on the link in the description below and use my referral code, which is there as well. Let's jump back in here at Peppermill and see if we can't make it two wins in a row after what was a pretty rough downswing. Vlog 158 takes place on a Thursday afternoon at Peppermill. And after multiple recommendations over several months, is being voiced on a Blue Yeti microphone for the first time. I jump into seat two on table five for an optimal filming angle. The game was tight at first, and a guy that I only know as the Michigan man nearly triples up. He had aces, one of the few hands that he'll play, and was up against kings, and another unknown hand that was not queens to win a massive pot. It was pretty clear the game was going to play fairly tight to start. I start off losing $85 by raising the 7-9 of diamonds and flopping a flush draw and shockingly not getting there with it. Then playing 8-handed, I pick up queens in middle position and make it 15. The button, 3 bets to 40, and the big blind, who only has 200 left, makes the call. I come back over the top with a 4-bet to 140, to which I thought the button would call and the big blind wouldn't. Instead, they both do. So with 420 in, the flop is 7-8-9 with two clubs. Big blind only has 55 left, and he puts all that money into the pot in the form of a donk lead. I raise to 125 here, wanting to charge the button to pay more if he wanted to continue on with ace, king, or pocket tens. Instead... He thinks about it for a minute and mucks the hand. So I'm heads up with the all-in, and despite a jack of clubs on the river, which I certainly didn't like, we still end up taking the pot down as he never shows. I lose a few pots over the course of the next hour, and the man formerly known as Mr. C, but prefers the nickname Sharky, and yes, now says his face can be shown on the vlog, opens to 15 from plus one. The low jack calls, and I have ace-10 on the button and opt for the $75 squeeze. I assume that Sharky would call and the low jack would fold. Instead, once again, both call. With 230 in, the flop is slightly above average. Check to me, and I decide to just bet out here for 90, trying to get hands like queen-9 to consider coming along, along with obviously all the better hands that are definitely going to be coming. Sharky makes the call, and the low jack folds. Is it just me, or does it seem like there is a disproportionate amount of time when you flop a straight, and the turn card pairs one of your two cards to kill your action? With 410 in, the turn, as you've probably guessed, is a 10. He checks, and I decide to slow play this at this point, hoping for river value or potentially a bluff. The river is a 6. He checks, and I decide to bet 125 here, Trying to get paid off by a pretty wide range of hands, as I normally do. He calls, giving us a $660 pot. He shows a 10, and we take the pot down. Then I play a second hand against him, where all I flopped was a gutter and a backdoor flush draw. I raised a flop bet to 60, and he called me. And despite not improving at all, I won at showdown with ace high. Then we get a middle position raise, and I pick up a hand that I think should now be referred to as the Phil Hellmuth. But, you know, I have to defer to his utter poker wisdom as to how to play it, so I just throw the hand away. Was card dead over the next hour, made several attempts at flopping a set that were unsuccessful. Small pocket pairs kind of ate me alive over the first couple hours of this session. I seem to be getting dealt a lot of them, but, uh, well, they'd make up for it later on, as you'll see. Then I flopped trip fives on 559. Five, I happened to be up against King-9, and that was fantastic. Up until the river was a 9, and I had to fold to an all-in check raise to a vlog viewer named Patrick, who showed his hand as he knew I was recording. I was hoping I'd get a spark when the game's most aggressive and, as he puts it, adventurous player 
three-bet three me when I had pocket kings, but unfortunately he got away when I came back over the top with a four-bet. Then the hijack, who won that full house over full house pot against me, opens to 20. I have pocket sevens in the cutoff and make the call. And with 45 in, we're heads up to queen seven, three, two clubs. Middle set for me, and he leads out for 20. I decide to raise that to 55, and he comes along. So with 155 in, the turn is an offsuit nine, and he checks. I bet out for 85 here, and yet again, he's not folding. With 325 in, the river is the six of clubs, and he checks. Obviously not the river card we're looking for here. And we know that he likes to check raise the river for value, but I can't just check this back. I still have to go for value to try to get his queens to pay me off here. So I make it 110, and he calls, giving us a $545 pot. And he does have a queen, but also a nine on a bad turn card for him. And we take that one down. We see some big pots play out in this game. And while it's not as great of a lineup as we're capable of seeing, it's definitely above average. Then I raised a 40 under the gun two with jacks over a hijack straddle. He calls with 80 in. The flop once again comes slightly above average. If he doesn't have an ace, it's a disaster to bet and get a fold here. And if he does, well, I should be able to get action on the turn, even if he checks back. So I slow play these flop quads, as I think a lot of you would as well. He doesn't bite, turns the queen of clubs. I lead out for $35 here, thinking that the most likely hand he's probably going to have is just a queen. And he proceeds to call. So with 150 in, the river is another ace. So I decided to go for gold here. I bet just under double the size of the pot, figuring that either he's got the ace or he doesn't have a hand he can call with anyway. He actually thinks about it for about a minute, which is long for him, and he folds, making me wish that I do what I usually do in that spot and size down. Going for gold with the nuts has almost never worked for me over the years, which is why you rarely see me try to do it. Then kind of a weird hand, I pick up two black aces under the gun and open to 25. Three guys call that 5x raise, and they are definitely the three loosest guys in this game, so that's good. With 100 in, it comes eight deuce for rainbow. I bet 55, and all three of these guys make the call. With 320 in, the turn is the seven of hearts, completing the rainbow. I bet 125 here. Middle position calls, and the other two fold, which is pretty much what I was rooting for with just one pair at this point. With 570 in, the river is a card that I hated, a five, bringing in a one-liner to a six, which he's going to have a lot of the time here. It's unlikely that he's going to bluff after I've shown so much strength, and I don't expect him to value bet weaker here. So I have to bet, but I do have to bet small, so I put out 130, and he doesn't take too long with it, and he folds the hand. So, a hand that seemed on the flop like it might be a disaster with all these guys staying in, ends up being the highlight of the night so far for me. I'd win a few more pots, and was on my way out. I actually grab a few racks, and as I'm racking up, I pick up pocket tens. Under the gun one opens to 15, and I three bet it to 45 from plus two. Big blind, cold calls, and the opener completes as we knew we would. So with 135 in, the flop is king-queen-10 with two clubs, giving me bottom set. Check to me, and I bet 65, which pushes the big blind out. But as you can see, the guy on my right isn't going anywhere. And with 275 in, the turn is the three of clubs, and he checks. I bet 115 here. And he makes the call. So with 405 in, the river is a disaster. It's another club, putting four of them on the board. And he checks. He's not the type of guy that's going to be all that likely to fold any club if I try to turn the set into a bluff idea, which I have done in the past. So I just have to check back here and hope that he doesn't have a club, which thankfully for me, he doesn't. He shows queen jack offsuit. 
So we take down the pot against what is only middle pair on our last hand of the night. All right, we are fighting back from this down swing, wrapping up an eight hour session here at Peppermill, booking a $1,500 win. So a couple of wins strung together in a row after that down swing. All right, checking in for a question of the week, recording this uh, with the new microphone, as you can see, on opening day for my San Francisco Giants, uh, rocking the jersey now, 10 years old, 2012 world champions, hard to believe. Last year on this vlog, I did the same thing, rocked the jersey on opening day, and I said they'd miss the playoffs. Instead, they had the best record in all of Major League Baseball. Don't think that's going to happen again, but I think they'll sneak into the playoffs this year if I had to guess. Just a quick question of the week for those of you who are new to this channel and have wondered the same thing. And this came in on the comments during last week's vlog. Yavin writes in, are there any other casinos that have poker in Reno besides the Peppermill? Sometimes when I have a downswing, I change venues. I'm not sure if you have that luxury there though. Well, there are several other casinos in Reno with poker rooms. You have the Atlantis, where I used to play at quite a bit. The Grand Sierra Resort, and the Silver Legacy all have poker. I think the Calneva does too, actually, <laughs> technically. Um, but none of these places have games above the one, two level. So that's the reason why you never see me play at any other Reno venues. If I want $5 blind games, which I do, I love $10 blind games. If I could get them, I have to uh, go to Vegas or go to Sacramento or San Francisco, something along those lines. But I think it's actually the best thing for poker in a market the size of Reno is just to have all the players confined to one room. You don't want to spread them out and have several games at several places with just a guy or two on the list that are barely hanging on. You want to have multiple games at one place. And that's the best thing. So I know just playing at the Pepper Mill constantly gets kind of redundant. Um, but the games are good and the games are action packed as you've seen, hopefully it makes for some entertaining blogs and we will be leaving uh, the Peppa Mill here at the end of April to go to Texas and play down at 52 social as we mentioned. If you made it this far, do us a favor and hit the like and subscribe buttons. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Ben Deach and we'll see you back here next time. Mm -hmm. Oh, and one note from the next day. Mm -hmm. The aforementioned Sharky went into absolute beast mode. He won a $7,000 pot flopping a set of sevens on an ace high board, doubling up through one opponent and belting another. It was ugly.